Okay, hello. This morning we're coming to you from my study at home, but this is not where I am going to make today's presentation. I wanted to meet with you first. This is a little bit of an unusual circumstance. I'm conducting a class in my living room. There's a group that is trying to learn German. We've been meeting for quite a while. Amazing students. They learn extremely fast. Uh, and today we happen to be doing a subject I haven't covered yet, so I thought we'd kill two birds with one stone. We're going to do the subjunctive. I just want to say one thing. I, I'm not exactly sure why they're learning German. I think there were three young ladies and two gentlemen. And I think the females are hoping to land a German Shepherd. And the guys, my thinking anyway, the guys don't think they're going to be so successful, so they want to be there when plan A fails. And so they're getting to know the girls a little bit better and impress them with their skills in German. Uh, they're pretty focused, the students, so don't let them disturb you or distract you from what we're going to be covering here, the subjunctive. So we're going to head into the, the living room right now and start the presentation. I'm going to shut off my light. Okay. Here, we're ready to go. Hi, how are you all? No response. Okay, I thought I'd get a little grrr from you, but apparently nothing. Um, we're going to have a little bit of, oh, no, Maggie, I know you are interested in them all, but you can't have them. They're here for a different purpose. Um, we have here Parkamides and Huda and Pepper and Ginger and Sugar. Now, please forgive them if they seem a little unfri unfriendly, but when we have this class, they get pretty focused. And besides, they're paying good money. Uh, they want every minute to count. So we're going to start right away. Today's topic is the subjunctive. Can any of you tell me what the subjunctive is? Oh, ginger. <laughs> you got, that's not subjunctive, that's conjunctivitis. And I have a sneaky suspicion you kind of knew that. I mean, you must have learned about that in biology class. No, anybody? Anybody? <laughs> hey! Hey, it's pretty clever. That's right. It's a condition contrary to fact. It's something that didn't happen or something that isn't going to happen. And in English, and we're so fortunate, English and German form the subjunctive the same way. It's built on a tense, one tense past. So the present tense of the subjunctive in English are, is based on the past tense. And the past tense of the subjunctive in English and German is based on the past perfect tense. But today we're going to focus just on the present tense. There's another thing they have in common. They don't have to express it using a form of the past tense. What word do we use in English? Which word plus the infinitive do we use in English to express the idea of subjunctive? Nobody, huh? All right, we don't want to take any more time with this because we have guests today. And they're anxious to get this on. It's would. Would plus the infinitive is the subjunctive. Now. For example, and this you have to accept. This is so important to getting the subjunctive right. If you accept this fact, the subjunctive will be easy. Would plus the infinitive equals the past tense in the subjunctive. So if I would say would play, that is the exact same thing as saying played. Do you accept that? Good. Yep, not so sure. Um, would play. If I would play, we would win. That means the exact same thing as if I played, we would win. Now, in English, 
we have, it's a rule, or it's, I think it's a rule, but if in any way it's what we normally do in the first clause, in the if clause, and subjunctive usually appears in an if-then clause. In an if clause, we use the one word form, the past tense, if I planned. And then in the then clause, we use would plus the infinitive. If I played, we would win. If I ate this, I would vomit. I am not going to eat it because I don't want to vomit. And I don't want to play. I'm not going to play. So, good luck trying to win. That means the decision has already been made not to do it. If I would play, we would win. If I played, we would win. They are the exact same thing. German has both of those exact same forms, built the same way. The difference being, however, that in German it's perfectly acceptable and it's becoming increasingly more common to use the would plus the infinitive form in the if clause as well as in the then clause. And that's good and fortunate for us because it's very easy. You simply learn the forms for would, uh, the infinitive, you can't hardly get it wrong. As long as you understand the difference. Yeah, did you have a question? What was that question again? Yeah. What's the difference between if I played and if I play? All right. If you say if I play, you would finish it not with we would win. You would finish it with we will win. But you have not yet made the decision as to whether or not you're going to play. Well, it's going to happen. But if I play, blah, 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 blah. So you haven't decided yet. If you said, if I played, you've made the decision not to play. So if it's still a possibility that you're going to play, you're not going to use the subjunctive. Wenn ich spiele, gewinnen wir. If I play, we're going to win. But if you've decided not to, you have to use the subjunctive. Now, the would form plus the infinitive is the most common way to express present tense of the subjunctive in German. Right? And so, what's the word for wood? Holz? <laughs> no, that's the, that's the noun. Wood. W-O-O-D. That doesn't work. You know that. Okay. No, it's wood. The past tense. Interestingly enough, it's a from, built from the past tense, which is so appropriate in the subjunctive, right? In the present tense of the subjunctive, to make it past tense. It's the past tense of werden. But as is always the case with, whenever possible, with irregular verbs in German, in the subjunctive you add an umlaut. So instead of werden, you have the past tense wurde. Ich wurde, du wurdest, er wurde, wir wurden, ihr wurdet, sie wurden. And you add an umlaut, which of course changes the pronunciation, and it's würde. Ich würde, du würdest, er würde, wir würden, ihr werde, er würdet, sie würden. This is would subjunctive Chapman. And to that you simply add the infinitive. Now, because, well, we'll get to word order next. Let me just say this. You can also, just like in English, you can also use simply the past tense, especially in the if clause especially in the if clause. I kind of discourage you from doing that because it's just so much easier to use the verb, the form, and it's perfectly acceptable, perfectly acceptable, and it is the trend. It's you're getting away. But what you still may see or hear, subjunctive not using the verb, the form, let's see what those things would look like. There's a difference between regular and irregular verbs. So the regular verbs is the simple past tense. Spielt them. Wenn ich spielte is the same thing as saying, wenn ich spielen würde. Or machen, another regular verb. Wenn ich, wenn du es machtest, is the same thing as wenn du es machen würdest. With regular verbs, eh, you may hear this sometimes, I don't know. Yeah, no, nah, I know, you may hear it sometimes, but still the tendency, and I think it's a good idea for you to go with machen würdest, or spielen würde or whatever form you need based on the subject. Irregular verbs, some people still use it, but it's getting less and less common. I'll tell you how to do it. Um, 
but it's getting less and less common and it's dangerous, not dangerous, not physically dangerous. But some of these are archaic forms. Nobody would say it. And you're in no position to be able to decide or to realize or to know which are the archaic forms and which are the acceptable forms. So especially with irregular verbs, especially with irregular verbs, you want to use the verb plus the infinitive form. So what is the subjunctive form? Okay, well, I guess I, we could show you here. You add, you take the past tense and you add the subjunctive endings. E, E, S, T, E, E, N, E, T, E, N. Ich ginge, du gingest, er ginge, wir gingen, ihr ginget, sie gingen. But I put that in parentheses because it's not something I recommend. I'd rather you'd say, or it's safer for you to say, gehen würde. Wenn ich ginge, if I went, if I went, like well, I've already decided not to go, because if I'm going, I would say, wenn ich gehe. Wenn ich ginge is the same thing as saying, wenn ich gehen würde. And then you get one that nobody would say, for example. Asin, the past tense of Essen is as. You put the umlaut on there, you get s. Wenn ich, or it wouldn't be ich, wenn wir essen, wenn wir das essen. Nobody would say that. Nobody would say that. It would be wenn wir das essen würden. And I really recommend you do that. Now, there are a couple of verbs. There are a couple of verbs. Well, let's just look at a couple of sentences first. Let's just put them in a full sentence. Wenn ich früher ins Bett gehen würde, well, ging in parentheses because I really don't want you to do it. Wenn ich ins Bett gehen würde, würde ich abend nicht so viel essen. <laughs> that would apply to you guys. What is it that you always want? Huh? Yeah, <laughs> food, exactly. Yeah, especially you, sugar. Of course. Oof, food. Now, wenn ich früher ins Bett gehen würde, oder wenn ich früher ins Bett gehe, würde ich am Abend nicht so viel essen. If I went to bed earlier, I wouldn't eat so much in the evening. That's good advice, not just for you guys and gals, but for human beings also. Okay? Now, remember I said, Use verb the plus the infinitive. Well, I would say there are three verbs for which I would say that doesn't hold true. It's not wrong to do it. It's never, 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 never wrong to do it. But there are three verbs where I would recommend, three verbs in the modals. Can't forget the modals. Where I would recommend to you, I suggest, I'd like, I want you to use the past tense in the subjunctive. And that is sein, haben, and wissen. So, how do you form the past tense of the subjunctive for irregular verbs? You go to the what? The present tense. No, no, I, I made a mistake. The present tense of the subjunctive. You go to the past tense. Exactly. You go to the past tense and you add your endings. And do you remember what they are? Okay, what are the endings? Ich, ich, du, <laughs> E-S-T, very good. Third person singular, A-Z-S. A. Plural, via. It's right, E-N. The ear form is. Yeah, yeah, you got to add that E, E-T. And the plural, third person plural is. E-N. Third person plural is E-N. But what you have to do with irregular verbs, what you have to do with irregular verbs, and I haven't told you this yet, because the examples I gave you, well, actually, I hadn't told it to you. You might have been wondering, how come nobody asked? Wasn't anybody wondering about this essen? Look what I did. What's the past tense of essen? As. And part of the subjunctive rule is the present tense of the subjunctive, when you go to the past tense with irregular verbs, if you use the one word form, as, ging, if it can take an omlaut, it gets an omlaut. If it can take an omlaut, it gets an omlaut. The A can get an omlaut, so you have to put it on there, and then you put on your endings. So, what's the past tense of sign? Oh, come on, that's about the easiest question I could ask. Rough. Yeah, va, of course. Now, 
You remember the endings, you've demonstrated that, we just went over them. What do you have to add to var in order to make it subjunctive? <laughs> yeah, no I'm not. Absolutely no I'm not. So, we have the past tense of ich, I'm sorry, of sein is var. You have your subjunctive and subjunctive endings e, e, s, t, e, e, n, e, t, e, n. And you add an umlaut, because it's possible. So, wenn ich wäre, wenn du wärest, wenn er wäre, wenn wir wären, oh, I have it right there. I don't have to go through it all. You can see perfectly well what they are. This equals what? Wenn ich wäre is the exact same thing as saying what? None of you? Oh, yeah, plus, right, würde plus sein. Wäre equals würde plus sein. Okay? However, unlike with most other verbs, almost all other verbs, you should really use the werde form as opposed to würde sein. So, wenn ich nicht krank wäre, if I weren't sick, wenn du nicht so viel... Wenn du nicht so alt wärst, if you weren't so old, right? Now, there are two other verbs for which it's true, I think, and that's hätte and wüsste. And in both cases, it's obvious what's happened, right? You go to the past tense of haben, you put on your consumptive endings, e, e, s, t, e, n, e, t, e, n, and you add the umlaut. So, ich hätte is the equivalent of ich würde haben. Ich hätte is the equivalent of ich würde haben. Und ich wüsste, past tense of wissen is wusste, add the umlaut, you've made it subjunctive, wüsste, and it's the equivalent of yeah, wissen würde. Wissen würde. Very good. See, you guys, I mean, you are the best German students I've ever dealt with. If we were in school, you'd all be getting fives on the AP. Okay, so let's look at a couple of sentences. Wenn ich älter wäre, dann würde ich mitkommen. First of all, you don't need to, I put the dann in parentheses. You really don't even need the wenn, but that I'll show you later how to do it. I put the dann in parentheses to make the point that it could easily be left out. So, wenn ich älter wäre, if I were older, and once again, I'm choosing wäre and not verb design because my verb is sein. Wenn ich älter wäre, würde ich mitkommen. I would come along. But that's just not for me. I'm not quite old enough, you know. It's okay. So let's look at another one. Wenn ich genug Geld hätte. Ha! Wenn ich genug Geld hätte. What's that mean? <laughs> yeah, well, if I had enough money, right, if I had enough money. Reminds me of that famous, famous subjunctive sentence from that hit musical. Anybody? Anybody? Let me give you a hint. Fiddler on the Roof. Yeah. Well, it's a, that's, yeah, but what's the whole clause? If I were a rich man, right, if I had some money, Right? If I were a rich man. Were tells you that's the subjunctive of the verb to be in English. It means you're not rich. Wenn ich Geld hätte. If I had money. Dann, or you can drop the dann, würde ich es dir kaufen. I would buy it for you. I would, by the way, würde is the second element, infinitive at the end. Once again, it's very, it should almost come natural to you by now in English. We always have that helping verb followed by the possible or the infinitive or whatever it is in German and invariably goes to the end of the sentence. Würdig ist dir kaufen. And I want to make this point and show you this. You don't have to, you don't have to use wenn. You could say, hätte ich Geld, had I money. Same thing in English. Had I the money, I'd buy it for you. Of course I don't, so <laughs> you're out of luck. Right. Um, I think we can squeeze in the modals, 
I think we can squeeze in the modals. Let's try and do this also. Present tense, this is still all present tense, it's a jump. With the models, it works the same thing. You go to the past tense, you go to the past tense of the model, and you add your amount. With the exception of Zolan and Volan, they don't get amounts. But dürfte, könnte, möchte, müsste, those are all subjunctive present tense modal subjunctive forms. Go to the past tense, add the amount. Volan and Zolan don't get it. So what does that look like in a sentence? Das könnte ich machen. How does that translate? <laughs> well, you think that's all? No, that's just the verb. I want the whole clause. <laughs> yes, I could do that, wenn ich es wirklich wollte, if I really wanted to. I could do that if I really wanted to. You're not going to do it because you don't want to. That's what it means. Ich könnte das machen, wenn ich es wirklich wollte. Passt das subjunctive. And this next clause, I just want to point out that if you use the modal in one clause, or this next sentence, if you use the modal in one clause, it doesn't necessarily mean that the second sentence has to have a modal. It just depends on what you're saying. So, wenn ich dir helfen könnte, I should actually ask you to do that. I've given you the answer. All right, so you finish the sentence. Wenn ich dir helfen könnte, if I could help you, I would do it immediately. How do I say that in German? I would do it immediately. Exactly. Exactly. Würde ich es sofort machen? Würde ich es sofort... I would, würde ich, würde, würde is the verb second element right there. Okay. Würde ich es sofort, and at the end is the infinitive to do, würde ich es sofort machen. Now that's this present tense of the subjunctive in German, including the present tense with modal verbs. Are there any questions or do you think you got it? I think we, our time is up. You all are okay? Uh, <laughs> all right, so then same time next week, right? All right, good. All right, all right. so that's it for today. Uh, Thanks for putting up with the camera. I know you guys are all camera shy. Okay. <laughs>